Hey guys, Tom here for another uh, <laughs> Dark One Daddy Vlog episode two, day two. Um, uh, it's been a bit of a longer day today. I've spent much longer with uh, with Jacob. It's been a good day. I was like, got got up pretty early. Got up about nine o'clock uh, this morning, and it's it's now about eight o'clock or something. I think half half seven in, at night. Uh, got to the hospital at about 11. Tracy was still in the recovery um, unit and delivery suite that she was in last night, uh, just because the wards are full. Um, and yeah, I've been having a lot more a lot more interactions with Jacob, holding him a lot more and making a lot more noise. He is starting to... Um, he is starting to latch on for breastfeeding now. I don't know if I mentioned yesterday. He wasn't quite wasn't quite getting it, but he's starting to latch on and have a, have a few drinks and stuff. So um, it's looking like breastfeeding could be a possibility for us. We weren't we weren't sure we could, but basically because there were, because it was a C section, the problem with um, with both of them at the moment is because it was a cesarean, the body doesn't know it's had a baby, which I know sounds weird, but the whole thing about um, pregnancy is when, when a woman goes into labour and that pushing, that sort of pain, the pushing is what triggers the baby to clear out his lungs. It, trigger, it lets the baby know, you know, he has been born. The body, the pain tells the body, okay, the baby is now born. Let, it, it, the, the, the pain of labour is basically to say, we're ready to move on to the next stage now. Baby's born let's start going but obviously with cesarean you don't have that they just cut open and take the baby out it's an un it's an unnatural birth if if, if that makes sense um but it's not to mean the baby's not healthy baby's healthy tracy's healthy everyone everyone's healthy everyone's fine um tracy finally got to try walking today and she she picked it up pretty well she's not allowed to use stomach she's no stomach muscles at the moment you see um so she's she, but she was walking very happily um, it was hard at first, but she really got 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 used to it. We had we had a lot of visitors today, starting with uh, Tracy's Tracy's sister, Tracy's mom, um, uh, her sister's boyfriend, and uh, her her nephews. They came. I think I mentioned that yesterday. They came. Um, I popped out. I didn't stay for that one because visiting for the father, I get to do from eight in the morning till eight at night. Uh, every other all other. All other visiting hours are one till two, and then six till seven. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, because there were so many coming in, uh, I I left because you don't want to have. Because obviously she's just given birth, and she's you know it was her first ever surgery, so uh, she needed space. That's the one of the things she needed more than anything. So we had these. I mean, it wasn't. It's not a small room, but with five five new people entering the room. I mean, the nephews are only about. Uh, eight and nine between them but um with five people entering the room you know she doesn't really want she, it's not really i don't really need to be there for that hour I, so i went out and got some lunch um i got i got back just as they were about to leave and then we hung out for a bit tracy did actually manage to get some sleep she didn't get any sleep last night because uh they kept checking her like hourly they had check her bloods and all that stuff um but yeah they um they they're quite happy with her and she's off she's off all she can get up and walk freely now around the around the the bed and everything around her room got a toilet and stuff so that's good uh and we who else visited oh, my mum and my uh, stepdad uh visited and then my dad and and his and his missus his, his girlfriend and my sister came just just as they were leaving as well so uh, yeah, it worked out. The, the, the Tracy's basically Tracy's family came. Uh, the, the one came at one till about twenty two, quarter to two it was, and then my family came from for the six till seven. Um, but yeah, it's it's been going good so far. It's again the baby's completely healthy. Baby's good size. Um, you know he's sleeping tons. Um, he is starting to suckle again. Good news. Um, I was learning the. I, I kind of. I've more or less mastered the how to hold him now. It's like um, I don't have a thing I can use as an example, but basically, you, if you see the if you saw the picture that I posted on 
Twitter and, and, and Facebook, you'll you'll see it. But basically what I do is I he looks tiny in my hand. I can I can literally hold him in one arm and I just I have the head there and I just have his legs kind of hooked on my on my hand there. And that's like a good way of holding, but a good another thing is to pat the bum as you hold him. So you have to sort of have him like that. And when he starts like crying and if he gets like if he starts getting uncomfortable and stuff and he starts getting a bit upset, if you pat the bum it simulates a heartbeat. Um, which actually was really it, it. It helped. It just went knocked him straight out. You know, he went straight back to sleep. So, and we had to burp him a few times. He he, he did get. He, he didn't. He hasn't been properly sick yet, and he hasn't actually had a proper poo yet. But then again, he did have a poo as he left. As as they pulled him out, he did have a poo. I think I mentioned that yesterday. But he did. Um, he seemed so. He's not really had a proper poo yet. But he's not really had a proper really big feed yet i mean he's he's had feedings he's we've been feeding him and he has had he has been fed but it's hard to obviously because obviously tracy's body isn't quite um doesn't quite know it's had a baby yet so it's not quite it's we think it's starting but even i would one thing i would say is what i learned today is even if if you have a cesarean even if you know if you don't think your breasts are still producing milk, still try with the baby because the where the baby when the baby tries to suckle on the on the teat, it um it it's telling the body that it should start producing milk. So the more practice, the better for both of them really. The more they try to feed the baby, the better um the better they both get at it. Um and he 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 suckled he, he went straight on like before just before I left we thought we'll give, we'll give him another go feeding him and he went straight on but then sort of stopped he had a little suckle and just sort of stopped so whether that means he just wasn't hungry or Tracy still wasn't quite producing enough we don't really know yet but he seemed very happy he's very content and and if worse comes to worse we can bottle feed him we were we were originally going to bottle feed him because we didn't think she'd be able to breastfeed but um it went we know we're trying we're trying all the options out uh so yeah and I stayed there till about seven so i've pretty much been there all day 11 in the, 11 in the morning till seven in the evening um is is how long it's been uh, I've, been I've been at the hospital for pretty boring i'm if i'm gonna i mean i say boring it wasn't it wasn't boring in, in the sense i was just like oh what a go but i mean it was a lot of the time i had to sort of sit very quietly so i think i might depending how long if if if, if she she might might get released tomorrow hopefully she's not i should probably mention she's still at the hospital she's not um they haven't um they haven't let her out today um because it's just not she's not quite they're not quite happy yet so best case scenario she'll be out tomorrow if not tomorrow she'll definitely be out sunday but it should, if they're not out tomorrow they were definitely gonna let her out on sunday i don't see them prolonging it any 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 longer than that the the the, uh, the latest is is gonna be sunday i think uh yeah but hopefully hopefully she'll be back tomorrow and we can we can get a, get her here get her settled the house is nice and clean my mum came my mum came and clean it was already clean but it wasn't like mum clean you know what i mean so like i've always found that no matter how good you are at cleaning your mum is better than cleaning at least in my case i don't know about anybody else but i've always found that my mum is just stupidly better at cleaning anything than I've cleaned and, uh, and it was clean and then I was like there's no way she's got it any cleaner open the door we open my door it, there's a hall and literally just from that I, can, I was like yeah she's already done a way better job than I have and it is it's lovely you know in fact I, so much so I can even spin you around I don't mind spinning you around I'm showing you the front room look how clean this place is got the little baby baby bin there that's for all the nappies or the diapers if you're in America <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of our baby rooms. We got we got another one in the baby's room, and that's uh, that's that. And we've just got this is our setup actually. So look at that. Baby's gonna have plenty to do when he's older. <laughs> plenty to do. But to be honest, actually, I don't. I'm not gonna just have him um, on games console. To be honest, I'm probably not even gonna give him a bloody iPod or even a mobile phone until he's like much older because i don't believe in in you see like little eight-year-olds having iphones and ipads and shit like that and they don't need it what do they need it for it takes away the imagination of playtime to me so he's only gonna get a phone when i'm gonna when i'm when he's old enough to go out without supervision essentially and even then i'm gonna get him a shitty little phone that is a phone you know 
you know, maybe when in the when he's like eighteen, I'll spoil him to a prop. I'll get him a proper iPhone or a proper. Oh, no, I'm not getting an iPhone. Fucking hell, stop that! I'm not, never getting him an iPhone. But I might spoil him with a proper proper phone, a proper good phone at that point. But, but I'm not getting one of those parents that just sticks their kid on a games console or on a tablet to shut them up. You know, what I mean, I hate parents that do that. I think if you do not have the capacity to entertain your child and, and just any, I think giving kids a tablet or, or, or a game like that, I know it's the 21st century, but giving them stuff like that to entertain them takes away, takes away the imagination, you know? You know, it's so little imagination with games today because you don't need to. Look at look at Atari, the Atari 2600, all right? It, you have games that just, really shitty graphics you have to fill the rest with your imagination you know uh, but you know uh, anyway I'm sort of digressing here I'm talking about games but what I'm trying to say is I'm not going to use a game a video game or a phone or an eye or a tablet of some kind to just shut the kid up when he starts annoying me I'll try and do a more active I'll try and do something more active you know trying to get his, his creative side going which I think is always a good idea but that's that's my sort of parenthood planning. We have talked about who you know the structure of how it's going to be, and it's Tracy's going to be like telling him off for everything. So all the little things, all the things that you would tell a child off for normally, you know, not done your teeth, not cleaned your room, you've not done this right, blah blah blah. That's going to be Tracy's department. She's going to tell him off when she, you know she's going to do all that. She's going to be on his case for that shit. Um, I'm, I'm going to be strict, don't get me wrong, but I'm going to be, it's going to be a situation when, when he is fucked up, that's when, that's when daddy gets mad. And that's how they know, that's how he's going to know he's done fucking wrong. Because when mum, because it'll get a point where mum's mad at him, it's like, oh, she's always having to go at me for stuff I've not done. But then dad would be like, oh, fine. oh okay, dad's mad, oh, fuck, oh, yeah, better not. <laughs> but yeah, he's, I mean, he, he makes these cute little noises to Jake, he's like, eh. <laughs> Not like that. It looks. It sounds way cuter than that. I promise you. But yeah, it's. It was nice. It, I felt bad leaving. I really did. But I. My visiting hours are only eight in the morning to eight at night, and I decided to go at seven when my dad was going. Cause I thought there's no point me waiting here for another hour, and then having someone. I, my dad and my mum. They both said they'll come pick me up and take me home because I don't drive at the moment. And I just thought, while well, my dad's going, I, you know, I don't need to pest my mum to get her to leave because she's probably settled. What well, my dad's going, he's going that way anyway. I may as well just get. So I left at seven. I left an hour earlier than I, I, I was. I was going to get kicked out after. An, well, not necessarily kicked out, but I was going to. I was meant. I was only allowed to be there for another hour. So I thought I'm just going to leave now while someone's going. It's more convenient. But I really hate leaving. That, that's the hardest thing that's been today, actually. It's, it's, the hardest thing for me personally has been having to just leave her both times I think that's why I'm more eager to get her home I think that's what it is like obviously I want I want them both home you know I want them both home but it means that when they're both home I don't have to sort of worry about them because then the only time I've got to leave them is when I've got to go to work you know so yeah leaving them both leaving them both yesterday and today has been a bit it's been weighing down on me somewhat and I've I've been a bit upset about you know I've not like come home and started weeping but I just I just sort of get home and I'm just like oh, and I feel bad I feel guilty for leaving and I don't need to I don't think I need to feel guilty but I do I'm just like huh oh, I just get dead guilty about it and I'm just like no oh, I don't I don't really want to leave and I keep going Tracy you sure you're okay with me leaving she's like well yeah you know it's like she's she wants me to stay, but only because she likes me there to help. And it's like, well, you know, she says I don't. As you know, you get a nurse button, don't you? So she needs to touch someone. You know, she's help anything. Get a nurse. I was like, well, babe, give ring the nurses. But if any of for any of you who know Lady Nanaki, aka Tracy, this will not come as any sort of surprise to you. But I was like, well, we've been, well, you know, you, you've got your button, you can call the nurse. She's like, yeah, but they're very, they're very busy. I don't, I don't like pestering them. I'm like, oh, for God's sake. It's like, Tracy, <laughs> that is why you have the button. They're, that's their job. Their job is to help you, to ensure that you are fine. And again, that would be my advice to anyone going into hospital. Anyone, not just girls in hospital, but anyone who's in hospital and, and 
whenever eventually your friends or family or whatever whoever, whoever is there who has been helping you all day will have to go they have to go they can't you know there's only certain circumstances they'll let you stay there all night you know you have to go eventually um so and if you and if the person you're leaving is that kind of person like oh you know i don't like i don't like bothering people if they're busy you know i don't like, i don't want to pass them i don't want to get in the way i don't want to i don't want to inconvenience them and tracy's the worst that and, and and if you get someone who's like that you need to do what i do you need to just turn around and say no you fucking if you need help you need to fucking call a nurse i'm being serious now and I, and she was like, oh yeah, I don't want to. And I'm like, right. I grabbed the nurse button. I plopped it right next to me. Like, there is your button. You can get it whenever you need it. It's there because it was hung up behind her. She would never have reached it if if um, she needed to. So I took it up and I plopped it down. And I'm like, there's the button. If you need help for whatever reason, you have fucking have to press that button you better do it she's like mm, you know and i was like for god's sake and anyway as i left I, I stopped by the reception and i said look she is not gonna fucking press that button if she needs help she's gonna fucking try and do something on her own and she's gonna and can you just keep checking in on her because she won't press that button she will not press that button she and i, and I said to the nurses why the nurse said that was stupid if they felt like that they just take the button off her i was like exactly that's why the button's there exactly can you please go tell her that and they went they went yeah we'll go have a talk with her don't you worry about it so the nurses were very i've not met a bad nurse at that place yet i mean they've all been so different but they've all been really nice and that's just what they need to be i suppose but yeah, I, I went, as I was leaving, I, spot, I stopped by the desk and I went, look, she is not going to fucking press that button. She, I don't see her doing it. So can you just keep checking on her or, keep, or have a word with her because she's just being a pain. She's just being a, you know. And what she doesn't understand is by not being a pest, she's actually being a pest because it does, it does her no good to risk anything at this stage. It does her no good it really doesn't like i left when i left her the baby was in in the cot it, in the cot but what if she wants to pick the baby up or try to feed him and she tries to get the baby out on her own and there's an accident you know she doesn't understand that by trying not to be inconvenient she's actually being very inconvenient because she might make things worse so i i i if you have if you have someone who is in hospital who is like that you have to fucking kick some ass you have to fucking turn around and say look if you need help call for help don't be a dick don't be don't don't be inconvenient don't be inconvenient by trying not to be inconvenient it, it does my head in that so hopefully the nurses have had a speak to her about it and hopefully she's she's gonna message she's gonna buzz them every time she needs help because like I said, she's still in the delivery unit. She's still in the delivery unit in the recovery area. She's not been put in a ward yet. So, you know, she gets more, she's getting more constant, you know, care as it is. So, you know, I just, I hope she listens. I really do. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to go, I'm going back there for 11. I'm going to get there at the same time again tomorrow. Hopefully, they'll let us go. If, she, if they let us go, I'll, tomorrow i'll be doing like i said yesterday if they let us go tomorrow i'll i'll try and ha I'll, I'll i'll introduce baby and tracy and hopefully they'll let us do a she'll want to do a join me on the blog the vlog the, the, <laughs> the vlog hopefully she'll want to join us on the vlog if not she might just want to relax and that's fine as well but yeah um message what's my what's my message for the end of this video i suppose that when i said you know if you get people who are sort of don't like bothering people who need to bother people you need a and you're leaving them there you need to say fucking if you need help you fucking press that button and you buzz for help you do not risk anything because you don't want to pest people okay never if you're in that situation never think you can't ask for help never think oh i don't want to bother the nurses i don't want to be a pest because you might risk doing something even worse you really might, so fucking don't do it. Just ask for fucking help. It's not hard. It's not difficult. Okay? The nurses are there. They give you a button. Press it. For God's sake. 
don't be that don't be that person that doesn't like inconveniencing people when they really should be inconveniencing people and it's not an inconvenience people like nurses people like family okay people who love you they don't see it as an inconvenience they really don't martin every time martin's had like when martin has a bad day and i ring him and i, I message him and i talk to him and he's like yeah i really i don't i'm sorry i'm really sorry i might say to him oh, oh god part two i guess <laughs> you know i always say to him i always say to him martin for love of god um if you ever need to talk message me doesn't matter about time difference i'll say it to you now if you're watching martin if you ever need to talk fucking call me Message me, send me a tweet. Get on Skype, you prick. I'll be there. Because it's not an in What you lot who don't like inconveniencing us don't understand is on the other side of that fence. We don't see it as an inconvenience. We don't. We want to be there for our friends, for our loved ones. Fucking hell. <laughs> and I, I say to Martin, and I'll say to Tracy, and I'm going to say it to you as well. If you ever need the support of someone for whatever reason you need someone that you know will be there for you you never 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 feel you can't reach out for friends never because while you might think oh i don't want to keep buggering them i don't want to keep bothering them they probably don't see it as a bother. if they're a true friend if they truly love you and care for you they won't see it as a bother they will see it as a duty and that's what it is it is a, it is a fucking it is like part of the the the, the contract that you don't sign you know it's part of the deal to be a family to be friends the whole fucking point is to is to look after them that's the whole point you don't look at if you don't want to be there for the bad times you're not a friend you know that's the way i see it you can be there no friend who is there for the good times but not for the bad times is a friend fact and if you're that kind of friend if you're that kind of person that doesn't that says yeah i'm only here for when it times get good then you're not a friend, you're a dick, all right? That's what friendships are, that's what family is, that's what relationships are. It's about being, it's about being there for everything. Not just the, not just the bits you wanna be in, not just for the good bits, okay? For all of it. Life isn't a buffet. You don't pick what you want from life and that's, that's your perfect life and you walk off. Okay, that's not life. That's not life, that's not friendship, that's not love. Love is a fucking, you know, force fed down your gullet. You'll take whatever is on that plate and you'll fucking have it and you'll you'll consume it because that's what you have to do or you'll choke on it. Huh. Sorry, got a bit intense that time. So yeah, if you have a friend who is like that, you fucking give them that speech. Play this video, get it on a phone and if they're like, I don't want to inconvenience them, beep, play it. Give them that fucking video. Say, listen to this guy. I know he's fat. I know he's got a funny face like a potato. But just let it go. Let Listen to him for two seconds. And you'll understand why you're being stupid. You know, we're good people. Us friends and family. That you don't want to inconvenience. We're good people. And we don't see it as an inconvenience. We see it as part of our duty to protect and, and care for you. And that's, that's going to be the video. That's going to be the message for today. Is please don't see... Please try and think of if you don't if you want to inconvenience your family or whatever. Please don't think of it from our side of it as an inconvenience, because it isn't. It's not. It won't be. A true friend, a true family. It's not. It's not an inconvenience to help those you care about. It never will be. It can't be. It really can't be. So yeah, <laughs> that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to mesh them to, to, into one big video on it because my video only records 20 minutes. And then it makes it another file. So I've got two files now. I've gone over 20 minutes. So I'm going to make it two videos. So if, <laughs> anyway, um, have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a good evening, a good night, wherever you may be in this great, big, wonderful world. Hopefully, on tomorrow's vlog, I will have someone or some ones here to share this, share this episode with me. Until then, look after each other. And... Uh, yeah, <laughs> enjoy life. <laughs> see, you. see you tomorrow, guys.